Okay, okay, hi guys. Uh, welcome to, I think, the 21st, 21st DID live chat. Uh, so today we have Prof Yen, Dr. Hello. Yen. Hi. Yeah. And we have DID alumni, Raymond. Okay, so, okay, before I get them to introduce themselves, uh, if you're here and you have any questions, oh, hi, Weipeng. Yeah, if any questions, just click onto the questions icon at the bottom of the screen and submit a question so I can pin them and everybody can follow. Okay, so Dr. Yen, could you tell us a bit more about yourself? Okay, uh, I'm Yen Yin Chen, and at this moment I'm also the co-director of the KL Andrew School Center. So I have a joint appointment with, I have a joint appointment with a Smart System Institute, which we do for interactive digital media design. And then we also, uh, for myself, I also do something related to uh, medicine. So mm. we uh, run Design for Medicine Studio nearly every year. So our students have a very good experience in the hospital. They always adapt uh, data directly, and then they do for different type of projects, and then very hands-on. So they can solve the problem starting from uh, simulation, start for surgical guide, even for design some sort of medical equipment. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. So maybe could you tell us a bit more about what are some of the platforms that you run in DID? What okay. do you teach? So uh, I think next to me is uh, Raymond. Raymond was our student to do for several um, mm. medical studio. So, for example, Raymond have a very nice experience to work as a doctor in hand surgery. So, mm. for example, in hand surgery, we try to see how can we design different type of instrument or try to design something to train their doctor. I think, uh, for example, for Raymond's case, it's some sort of simulation training. Mm. So, some of the uh, training, uh, some of the operation is very, very complicated. And mm. then there's no formal way. And then normally for medical doctor, they try to do the trainings, they watch. Mm. They go to different hospitals, they watch how it's an expert to do it. Mm. And then when they watch several times, and then they can practice. But like the, one of our collaborator mentioned, it's not acceptable in the modern society. Because you only watch, you never practice. And then the first time you practice, it's on the patient. Mm. So how can that be? So mm. but uh, Raymond designs uh, one of a very interesting type of simulator. Allow the surgeon can do a practice and then to do a very complicated type of surgical planning. So mm. in that way, the doctor have a better way to inform and then can do a much more successful type of operation mm. before they really do uh, be, uh, compared to before. Mm. So that's one type of um, uh, topic we may receive. Mm. And then the other type of topic is could be um, into like uh, we may design some sort of instrument for operation or for diagnosis or for other type of treatment. So oh. one of our uh, other student listen, he designed something for bone marrow uh, aspiration. Bone marrow aspiration. Yeah. Mm. So that means is, um, but in, in the first part when the data come and talk to us is, uh, the data told us that the, the process is so, so difficult. So they want us to design something to train the data. But when our student or when Ethan went to see the operation, and then he found out, no, it's not really the training problem. Because the design of the instrument has some problem. Design so, of the instrument yeah. for the bone marrow aspiration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he found out a lot of doctor because they don't know whether they can get a bone marrow or not. So they really shake because there's no feedback. So mm -hmm. as a result, he designed a very interesting type of device allow the doctor to see the result. So mm -hmm. when they do the bone aspiration, at least they don't need to just guess whether they get it or not. But during the process, they can see some result and then they can do the bone marrow aspiration with much more higher confidence. Mm. So that's the other type of project we did. Mm. Yeah. So uh, we do for this type of project for past maybe more than five to seven years. So we have For about, this uh, particular project, yeah. five to seven years yeah. with doctors. With an uh, NUH doctor. Mm. So each year we have about maybe seven to ten projects. And then the mm. doctor will try to uh, support uh, provide us different type of problem statement mm. and then the student got a chance to go to like a OT they can go to clinic and then to observe what is the real problem whether mm. the problem statement from the data is true mm. whether there's another way to solve the problem because we don't want it like a, people tell us there's a problem and then we just think that's a problem mm. as a designer what we need to do is really try to identify the insight and then try to identify whether the problem statement is true mm. or how can we translate into an even bigger context to solve the problem. Mm. So uh, that's the way we try to train. So the students have a very, very good chance to go to the, the hospital and then to work with the doctor. 
So mm. for past few years, we also received or we also filed more than 10 different patents because of this of, this of the collaboration. And then we have few projects now is in the um, clinical uh, trial to mm. understand that can be really pushed to the market. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, Dr. Yen. Mm -hmm. So there's about like five people now. So uh -huh. for those of you who just joined in and, and missed the introduction, mm -hmm. uh, today we have uh, Dr. Yen and Raymond Hon, uh, the ID alumni. So Dr. Yen, he was explaining more about his background and his specialization mm -hmm. in medical innovation. Yeah. Uh, and he leads a platform course that focuses on this yeah, design in the healthcare industry and the medical industry. Mm -hmm. So some examples that were raised was uh, like simulations. Simulation, surgical guides. Surgical uh, guides, surgical tools. Yeah. Mm. And the students are working together with NUH. And so far, it's been, uh, there's been a few, many patterns that have been developed. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and there are some student projects have gone until clinical trials. Yeah. Mm. And then a lot of them also win very good design prize. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. So I think Isan Pong's one. Among Isan Chow, just as I mentioned, one mm. of the students, he, uh, his design had won the uh, Stanford competition mm. from the Stanford University. And then which he which one? To, uh, which one? Uh, no, Isan Chow found the, it's another, his final year thesis. Mm. Yeah. Oh, the pot. So I've been invited to work economy for him. Mm. Yeah, one of the highest uh, yeah, oh, uh, for, for the economy and other things to share his design. So oh. it's a wonderful achievement. Oh, yeah. I didn't know about that. I only knew about the James Dyson Award. <laughs> <laughs> no, this one really yeah. uh, the only one I've been invited to okay. uh, work economy for him. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and also actually, Dr. Lane has been one of the pioneers <laughs> in shaping the curriculum too. So if any questions about like the curriculum, uh, anything um, medical design can ask Dr. Yen. Uh, maybe before we get to, some questions are coming in already. And before we get to your questions, maybe you can get uh, Raymond to share a bit more about yourself. Okay, my name is Raymond. Uh, I'm a year nine DID student. <laughs> yeah, so I joined the course in 2011. Uh, after I finished my NS. So before that, I was doing a diploma in product design innovation from Li An. Mm. So, yeah, so I mean, I was, I, I took what, three, three medic, my, uh, design from medicine studio. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's quite my cup of tea. So eventually I decided to pursue further studies. Uh. So I'm currently doing my PhD in, you know, in NUS as well. So yeah, it's mm. also a biomedical related topic. Mm. So, yeah. Thanks, Raven. Actually, so what, um, after your studies in product design, like mm. Ian Polly, like what made you yeah, decide to come to DID in mm. the first place? Actually, it's, initially I wanted to study in like mechanical engineering, but eventually I, my cousin who was an architect, man, so he brought me to this, I think the central, I mean, this shopping center. Then I think that was when they were having a great show. Great show, yeah. Yeah. Oh, was it central? Yeah, the central. Oh. We used yeah. to have a great show in all the department stores. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. In the earlier time, we tried to showcase our work to let much more Highlander to know what's design. Mm. So we every year we do an exhibition in all the uh, department stores. So we show in Suntec, mm. Central, Marina Bay. Uh, no, no. Uh, Marina Bay Center. <laughs> no, Marina Bay Center. Uh, Marina Square. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. And then uh, Paragon. Mm. Yeah, quite a lot. And then it's only until after 20, I think about 2009 or 2010, we start to change national to library. National Library. Yeah. Mm. And then after that, we moved to NDC. Uh, oh. Yeah. oh. Mm -hmm. Actually, okay, I'll ask a bit more about this, <laughs> but maybe not for this chat. <laughs> okay, we have one question. Thanks, Raymond, for the intro. Uh, okay. We have this question from Cannot La. Mm -hmm. Hi Raymond, were there any difficulties in four years in ID that made you want to quit? Four years? I only did three in ID, so I was a second year direct entry. Mm. So, okay, as a, as a diploma student translating to university studies, right, actually, the initial first year was actually quite difficult for me because actually of how. That was the second were, year, right? Yeah. Second, mm. yeah. So, in second year, I mean, we were challenged to think more in depth in, in every design we do. So I guess the transition phase was a bit difficult and yeah actually not sure even though we stay late a lot of times to rush projects and so I think overall my three years in DID actually has been quite enjoyable. So for me 
I do, I, yeah, there was at no point I feel like picking up. But what was your toughest period, maybe? Or like, yeah. toughest moment, if you can remember? Nine years ago? Toughest period, Second year, Yeah, I think it's the... For other general course, rather than yeah. design course. Mm. Yeah, actually, it's having to take modules outside of DID. Because actually, for us, actually, we spend a lot of our time in studio. And having to travel to another faculty, right, to take modules, actually, mm. can be a lot of time. But, yeah. But, okay, I mean... Actually, it's, all these like, electives actually allow you to actually pursue other like interests that you might have and actually maybe gain knowledge that eventually will help you grow experience uh, like mm. to come up with better designs. So mm. you never know and uh, might benefit out of it. Uh. So if you mm. choose your modules nicely. Uh. Mm. So maybe you can go to mechanical engineering, take some of them, like additive manufacturing modules and stuff. Learn more about 3D printing. Uh. Mm. So make it meaningful. Uh. Mm, so, so you were saying that uh, your biggest tr- struggle was in the transition period mm. and and you were saying it's because you had to think a bit more in depth, is it? Yeah. I think in your projects, what do you mean by that? Yeah. So initially, I think during my time as a poly student, actually we were trained more towards like skill based. So mm. like for the mechanic everything. So in terms of skill set wise, actually we were quite developed, but mm. more towards like working with like uh, actual like I mean instead of like uh, okay, we did internship in companies. So technically, working in a like for example agency environment or company environment is no problem. Just that now that we have to directly interact with part, like uh, the users themselves to understand their needs and stuff, instead of like taking things at the face of the surface. Uh. So mm. like trying to get more insights into that, that behavior mm. and trying to like find the root of the problems instead of just looking at the problems on the surface level. Uh. Mm. Actually, that was the transition part for me. Uh. Mm. Yeah, so yeah. Mm. Thanks, thanks, Raymond. Okay, I hope that uh, cannot uh, does it satisfy your your question, your curiosity. <laughs> if not, you can ask more questions or yeah, feel free to to clarify with Raymond. Uh, I also actually, you're more the people who are here, the six people. You are more than welcome to request to join, and then we can split screen and you can just talk face to face and just ask us questions on the fly lah. Yeah, because texting will be quite limited. Okay, hope that answers your question. Cannot lah. <laughs> I also can add some more, right? because mm. uh, for past yes. few years, right, we understand the when the poly student come in, right, quite often the design is not a really problem. It's always other course. So, for example, they choose some course for, um, uh, I don't know, for, for more mathematics type of things, for more <laughs> social science. All kinds mm. of things, right, like mm. become a problem for the student. Mm. Because for poly background, they may be very good in design, but they may not be so good in the other academic type of module. So, mm. that's always a struggle to come from. But this few years, we changed quite a lot for a new uh, general course, mm. as well as a bit more freedom for the student to choose. I think when Raymond joined that time, they have more compulsory type yeah. of course. Mm. Yeah, so that become uh, much more uh, problematic for the student. Yeah. yeah, now there are a lot more compulsory ones like uh, but general inquiry. Yeah. And, yeah. Mm. Now the, the, the compulsory one is more open in some certain sense. They talk about quantitative reasoning, they talk about more uh, Singapore culture type of things, more uh, thinking or other type of things, mm-hmm. uh, computation, yeah. So it's much more wider. Previously, it's much more narrow, and then mm. it's much more, you need to go to a specific department to study, they talk about general course. Mm-hmm. But now they try to do, from university point of view, is a general course for general. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. and before, it's a general course in a specific department. Mm. So that's a bit tough. Mm. If you guys want to find out more about uh, the specific module requirements that NUS has in place, just like you can ask about that also. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay, with this question. Oh, okay, more specific to Raymond. Hi Raymond, also from Canola. Yeah. What inspired your design for death? Because I gave them a link to your uh, portfolio. <laughs> so they, they saw your... Mm. Which one? I mean the... Yeah. Wind Chime, the... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which one cannot la? Because I think he has two projects. Uh, one was oh, your thesis. I'll talk about both. Right? Yeah. Talk about both. Okay. Yeah. What inspired your okay. the first one? I think I took a studio under Hans. No, I think the first one was under Ash. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. So uh, I think I took a studio. It's a part of a studio project uh, that actually challenges us to go and explore something. Uh. So I chose this topic of death. And I think I went to work with like uh, what, uh, 
ACM Foundation, Archie Moore Foundation. Ah, ACM Foundation. Yeah, yeah. so mm. they were talking about like something like co-existing with the like the disease, uh, basically. And okay, the, f- the first project I did was something like Wind Chan. Uh. Basically, it's more of like more exploratory and challenging perception of like uh, death and cremated remains and how to handle it and whether like introduction of technology can be like more well accepted. For example, mm. like using like a cremated remains for additive manufacturing. Mm. So yeah, that was the initial stage. Uh. So my other project, which was my final year thesis project, actually it's more. T- it's more on a system level, so mm. it's like more of like uh, looking at current problems we face in Singapore, like for example the land scarcity, and mm. this problem not is not only found in Singapore. I mean, for example, Hong Kong, yeah, basically there are cases where people have to wait like maybe two or three weeks like before they are like the bodies can be cremated mm. and, Yeah, bodies will get piled up. And after cremation, I mean, there's also no place to store. So for example, sea burial has been gaining quite a bit of traction actually mm. the adoption of sea barrier so mm. my, my take on that was actually to like for example uh, use design like, to like, enhance the experience of like for example sea barrier so yeah eventually it came up with a system like a uh, digital columbarium where you store the like, location where you do the what they call it the sea barrier mm. and also an urn like, actually that actually uses like hydrodynamics uh. so to allow the urn right to sink in a straight line downwards uh. Mm. Uh, yeah. So basically, it spins when it sinks. Uh. So uh, this effect is something called a rifling effect. Uh. So it actually, by spinning, it allows, like for example, the wave not to be able to like push it off course, uh. So mm. it, it can pro- sort of provide a more accurate signal. Uh. Mm, so that people can track the location yeah, uh, yeah, more accurately. Mm, yeah. mm. So okay, I mean, uh, in a general sense, right? Uh, what I wanted to do, like topics like related to death, is actually is a very taboo topic, uh. and mm. I think very few other disciplines actually get to actually get in touch with this kind of like for example engineering in business or this actually to actually go in like go in contact like, go in come in contact with like users understand their needs and stuff uh, with the with, uh, related to with relation to death right actually it's very hard so I think as a designer mm-hmm. I think this is something that we can like, contribute uh, was there any mm, so it was that your motivation yeah, because because it's a topic that actually no one wants to talk about mm, mm. Yeah, so maybe through design people will actually have a little bit more interest uh, mm, mm. You know, encourage people to discuss uh, mm. you know. actually which project like, do you like more of the two mm, actually it's or it could be the process also that you enjoy I guess actually one cannot exist without other because actually in the first place the first project the wind chime thing actually is more like Testing the water. Mm. It's not a pun, yeah, it's testing water. Actually, Whereas the sea bird project is something that is more functional and more implementable, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Actually, could you explain uh, that wind chime project mm. for those who don't know, who didn't see it? Uh, I see. Yeah. Basically, it's a, okay. uh, basically, it's an additive manufacturer. 3D printer? Yeah, 3D mm. printer. Okay, 3D printer <laughs> wind chime right, mm-hmm. that uh, basically uses the cremated remains of like the love, their loved ones right, mm. to. Yeah, as a material. Uh. So your deceased loved ones can actually coexist in the same environment as you like you say in your home. And mm. at the same time, for example, when the wind blows, like actually the sounds it makes actually reminds you of this person's presence. Uh. So because I mean there's a thing out of sight, out of mind. Uh. So you mm. won't actually forget about this person. Uh. Mm. Yeah, I mean that's the general gist of it. Uh. Mm. Yeah. Actually, can I ask like so um, like what's one surprising thing that you learned from that process of, of doing that project the wind chime project yeah, or it could be for the other one also mm. yeah, in, okay la, I mean something interesting okay I think with death in general la, I mean when I was doing like interview surveys and stuff I realised that actually it's a topic that people should talk about really discuss about and mm. but no one is willing to really talk about it so for example like for example how your parents want to be like Handed after mm. death. Uh. Mm. Actually, this is actually something that can cause family to break up, uh, mm-hmm. argue, have argument because of differing opinions. Uh. So, I mean, yeah, so I think this was one of the areas that surprises me a lot. I mean, it can cause mm. like uh, siblings to actually fall, fall out. Mm. Yeah, Sim- simply because no one is willing to talk about it because of taboo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Thanks, Raymond, for sharing. 
Actually, okay, let me see. Hope that answers your question cannot, la. Let me see if there are any questions. Okay, there's seven people here. If you have any questions, feel free to submit it in the questions icon below. But meanwhile, okay, to, I'll, I'll ask more questions. Mm. Uh, so, actually, maybe could you share your opinion? Because um, now I think more and more design projects and designers are more involved in like, the, the death industry mm -hmm. and to raise awareness, like, to make it more... Uh, accessible for people to talk about death and to be more open about it. Mm. Like, how effective do you think those efforts have been? This role that designers have been playing in the in the death industry. Actually, quite effective. I mean, there was an exhibition I think for Hans, right? I mean, he did a studio on death, and it showcases like I think how many years ago? Yeah, the past four years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think mm -hmm. it's like twenty students. Or I mean, mm -hmm. the students take on death and their outcome were actually interesting. I mean, it drew, actually drew a lot of attention from the public and actually it not just make people talk more about it, but also make them think more about their own mm. death. Mm. Yeah, I think yeah, in some sense it's quite effective. Nevada Memorial. Yeah, Nevada Memorial. Mm. They do a exhibition. Yeah. Mm. yeah, feel free to check it out. Um, it's uh, the Death by Design. Death, is it? Oh, Design for Death exhibition. Design for Death. Design for Death exhibition. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That was uh, curated by Hans Tan. Yeah. And either you can find Hans Tan's studio, mm. you can find the information on either our platform. Mm. I forget mm. which one he published. He did publish before. Mm. Mm. And I think also it's been published by, I forget which newspaper, Straight Times or Neighbors Are Bob. Mm. Sure, it should be a few. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, if you're interested, we can PM, PM us later and we can direct you to, to, to the website. Uh, okay, we have about... Okay, it's a 30-minute session today. It's been 22 minutes. If you have any like burning questions, really, like, there's no limit. Just like spam that questions icon. If not, would you have anything that you want to address? Or talk about? Really, no, I can uh, ask. <laughs> okay, maybe you yeah. can ask... Uh, I mean, every year, every week, we get the same question. Mm -hmm. uh, like, how are the prospects like? For, for the graduates in DID. Mm. Mm. Do you tell okay, us a for, bit more about that? I think this few years is quite different compared to uh, when we start to set up the division. And I think for now, you can see uh, the, the vision of a design or even in the division is quite different compared to long time ago. Now, uh, in the society, most of the people, they start to understand design. Mm. They start to appreciate design and then they want to use design. But the main problem at this moment is they don't know how to use the mm. design. So you can see, for example, in uh, financial industry, mm. uh, we have quite a lot of successful case now for our alumni now become an intervention uh, type of consultant in financial industry, mm. try to help people to do for human touch point, mm. uh, how to design a new type of human interaction for uh, financial industry. So that's become something quite interesting. And then we have other people maybe went to public service type of uh, area for different type of job for the service industry. Mm. And then we have another type of people more go back to more traditional industrial design, but maybe in the healthcare. And they, what they do is not only talk about equipment, they also talk about service, they talk about different type of the uh, system design as well. Mm. So, uh, so far I understand our students may work in Cote in Sing Health, in National Health, in and uh, in UH. so, mm. so that's been uh, quite a few of them all or the the manager or some other leading people has come from our uh, project mm. and then we I also understand the other type of people may go to government sector like GovTech there's mm. another uh, quite a good number of students work there mm. uh, to do for different type of innovation so in some certain sense our project nowadays not only talk about design as design we talk about more innovation Mm. So how can we use design as a driver mm. to help different type of innovation in different industries? Mm. So in, in the way you can see, uh, it's much more fruitful in some certain sense mm. because the student not only design something, mm. they try to see how can they use design to impact the quality of life of a human being. Mm. And now people have a better life through different type of design service mm. and through different type of innovation. Mm. Yeah, so, so there's been a lot of talk of like innovation and design thinking. Uh, maybe could you uh, share with us a bit more? Like what do you think are the main challenges uh, mm -hmm. when... Because actually this came up uh, in a conversation with Naroth, like, who just like, joined in the live chat a few days ago. Mm -hmm. He asked Don, like, so 
uh, like how like how do you manage expectations when you're trying to push for innovation mm-hmm. or more like design centered way of doing things in a mm-hmm. company yeah. in a business yeah I, I think in the, in the end it's much more talk about appreciation mm. because a lot of things right without appreciation they won't understand so that's the reason why you can see for this few years when we start to do a lot of different types of design platform that's one type of appreciation as well as outreach allow the industry to understand and then as well as allow them to understand design can do this way rather mm. than traditionally they only think about design is only more artistic or they only do for something furniture mm. or something much more uh, craftsmanship type of things mm, mm. so that's one type of way to outreach mm. as well as uh, to let people can be appreciate and then to understand what can design help them and mm. then from the case study because uh, design in some certain sense is not only about concept you call an outcome mm. and then from the outcome you are able to understand yeah that is a concrete outcome and that's the things you are able to ten- tangibilize mm. some sort of special philosophy mm. so for example from uh, even the we talk about the design for David is some sort of philosophy in some certain sense but from that expression from the interpretation of the student the, stud- the people out there or some other people they don't understand design they may start to see another way of appreciate design so that's one thing I think for the industry to understand or for us as an educator in the university that's what mm. we try to do mm. so in one way um, I think this few years we I can say we do much more successful compared to the other university because you can see our mm. students can really try to get into different type of uh, sector mm. in terms of uh, not only design sector but they try to use their knowledge in design, try to help them to do something different. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Thanks, Alain. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. yeah, actually, that goes back to the point of why we have to take like extra modules, right, outside of like DID modules or design modules. Right? So actually, for example, when you take a business module, right, you learn to communicate with like stakeholders, right, basically, in how to use a design to achieve their KPIs. Mm. So it's not just about oh, I design this, we do this, and that's the outcome. No, but because for them, it might not be that important as, for example, increase sales by how much percent. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, taking all these other modules also help you to, like, for example, learn to talk in their language. So, you know, having a common language mm-hmm. can help mm. them to gain a bit of understanding about design as well. Mm. So, you know. mm. And then through platform, we also have a nice experience. So, for example, uh, a few years ago, we voice uh, a one of the French in his school mm-hmm. and then so that's one type of how do we create a dialogue between the design school and business school allow the different type of students can, they can talk to each other to mm-hmm. create a common ground mm-hmm. and then we also have something to voice engineering we also have something to voice medicine mm-hmm. and then I think uh, Patrick also do some uh, hackathon for computing mm-hmm. so yeah so you will see all these sort of things happen that is a way to allow outside people to understand and to appreciate design more mm. but you also allow the design student to create some sort of common language and then to understand outside better as well because that means they are able to understand this design is not a very solely type of say design is only designed to do this but mm. design is a multidiscipline and then to require the community to understand and towards other people mm. because in the end whatever you design is used by people mm. even if it's a service even if it's a system it's a product in the end somebody needs to use it mm. yeah. Yeah, it's not something that you can do yeah. alone la. when you're designing for people. You always need to collaborate with different disciplines. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you, Dr. Yen. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, actually, we have okay specific question yeah. for Raymond Why? about the design, the, the design, the death design project. <laughs> Was the integration of hydrodynamics into your design a result of attending other modules? Uh, actually, okay. My background is actually a diploma in product design innovation, but that actually that was actually done in the school of mechanical engineering. So I had a little bit oh. of mechanical, uh, mechanical engineering background back then. So I went to the library and actually flipped some books, uh, basically to understand more and the online literature review to search for like principles and calculations and stuff. Uh. Mm. So yeah, actually, okay, a lot of times actually all these theories and stuff actually only works in the ideal situation. Uh. So actually, I made a skilled prototype actually and brought it to a swimming pool to actually t- test and evaluate, like, make very a lot of iterations to test. So, so actually, that's one very important point of like actually to do what we do here. Like. So by making a, like, a lot of prototypes, trial and error, test, actually to test out your 
like ideas right that you develop from theories right in the real world actually is very very important right? because mm. yeah design it doesn't exist in a vacuum right? it doesn't so like work in the only work in the ideal world right? so yeah like, it needs to work in the real world as well right? so take into consideration from other factors right? mm-hmm. yeah okay thanks for everyone hope that answers the question mojo jo zef that's the name of the mm. person uh, but yeah, actually I got one like, question that I wanted to ask like, Dr. Yen because somebody asked a very good question like how has the DID curriculum mm-hmm. evolved over time? Yes. Yeah, and you'll be a good person to ask for that. Okay, uh, the, the curriculum changed quite a lot compared to... Uh, I joined the US in 2002, Ooh. so it's quite a long time ago. At that time, um, the design is still much more traditional. So you can see a lot of students doing for um, talk about furniture, talk about lifestyle. Mm. Sorry, um, but interestingly, yeah. interestingly, it's okay. You can see uh, at that time, based on the government statistic, right? Singapore only about I think few hundred designers. Mm. So if you try to see uh, based on the our graduation rate, uh, four uh, at that time three polytechnic plus NUS, I think we can the market very fast. Mm. So I think in about 2007, uh, when I start to do a trip overseas, mm-hmm. try to search for different type of curriculum to see how is overseas people teach design and how is a new trend for design. Mm. So we start to see how can we apply design in the other discipline, not only design as a design as a product design or to do for lifestyle, to do for furniture or more craftsmanship type of things or artistic. So um, that's the reason why I think we start to do some experiment in 2009. At that time mm-hmm. we start to think about is, uh, the first one, I think few things we identify in our study trip. The first thing that we found out, traditional industrial design course is a bit more theoretical. We think about we need to teach the student based on layer. That means the first layer, maybe they need to know how to sketch. They need to know uh, fundamental knowledge about uh, geometric design. They understand all the design elements, all these things. And then after that, they can start to do for application. And then when they start to do for application, they come from a very simple one, talk about maybe handheld, hand, uh, some sort of handle design. And after that, they may go to system and make go to even bigger. But in that case, until their final year, they may have a chance to do something bigger system. That's the only chance they can do. But mm. that means for the past three years or four years, that it's not a chance they can do different because, things. Mm. And then another student come back, complain to me. Well, I was a program director at that time. Say, uh, Dr. Yen, I don't want to do this, but you always ask her to do this because the curriculum is always seven layer in type of effect. So, but when they bridge, they may become, they want to do something more service, they want to do other things, it's not really addressing the curriculum. Mm. So, we start to see how can we change all these other things. That means the student, what they need to do is, uh, if you try to see from the industry, is the student come back and talk to you, say, oh, we learned a lot in our first year, because we start to work with uh, engineer, we start to work with the marketing people, we start to work with other people. So, that means it's a multidisciplinary type of integration or create something. And then they also don't have that sort of layering effect or scale type effect. Say, you build, you are the junior designer, you only can design a, a pen. And then now you are senior designer, you can design a notebook. No, they don't do that. You go into an industry, you are just based on tasks and you are assigned to do something. They never follow that sort of system. So we start to see why we want to follow a traditional system. And then so we try to refer to some other system um, or other type of um, attempt globally. For example, I think in NSIP, they try to do some sort of uh, vertical studio for five mm. years. Mm. And then in, I think in Northwestern, they have a very interesting type of uh, program. Throw the people into the water, allow them to learn how to swim by themselves. Mm. Instead of teach one by one. Mm. So we try to see how can we really integrate this sort of a very interesting type of concept. And that's mm. the reason why in 2010, uh, 2010, we introduced our design platform. So in the mm. design platform, it's much more we try to see uh, in the lower year, the student can try to learn a very foundation in the first year. Mm. And then after that, in, when they move into a design platform, that means the student, they can try to experience different types of platform, allow the student have a something called brave type idea. Because they have a, I think at this moment, you based on our website, you can see there are more than 10 different type of platform or 12 different type of platform being introduced. Mm. 
And then we allow the student to choose by themselves. In one way is uh, the student can try to cater their own career pathway. So that means they don't need to say, you doing design, you only can do this. That means you can try to plan out. So in one way, we try to see in the lower year, they can browse. They mm. can try to see other students, other platform how they're doing. And then, so they are able to free to choose. And then in the senior year, they are able to become expert in that area. Say, for example, if you, in your uh, second year, you choose four different platform. And then after that third year, you may choose another two, and then you go for the change. But in the second, uh, in the third year, you may try to see, oh, I like this platform, so I can choose again. So you mm. become a senior designer in that platform, and then you can try to teach other people to work with you. So in that case, we in the platform system, there are some, there are few things we can learn. The first one is the student in the lower year they can become a junior designer. In the senior year, they can become a senior designer mm. because it works as a team, and then. Be- because they work in the platform, so that means the knowledge they can translate and mm. continue. Mm. It's not like before, all the knowledge will just start in one year, and next year when the student comes in, it's all new. Mm. So that becomes a, a very big type of a, uh, education because mm. there's no uh, continuity. Mm. And then after that, they also can, based on the chance, they can try to expert in some area which they are interested in, rather than before we force them to do something. Mm. So that becomes some sort of very successful type of education because we give much more freedom to a student, we give the responsibility to a, to a student, mm. and then we also find out something very interesting is we call a peer study. And before mm. we never see the peer study, so that means they learn from their senior, mm. or they, they learn from their classmates. Uh, and before we always teach so called a skill by ourselves from the lecture course. But we found out based on the platform system, the senior they can teach the skill much mm. better than what we teach. Because mm. during the practice and then during the, the, the because of uh, the senior they already have some experience, so they can directly tell them some sort of shortcut. And then in that case the junior have much more interest in to learn. So mm. that's become some sort of very interesting type of ecosystem. Mm. for the student to grow mm. and then we also see the other things happen it's like a, uh, just now what I say is ideal situation so in an ideal, situa- an ideal situation it's like a, the, the senior is not strong so the junior start to need to learn to become a leader mm. so we also see that sort of thing happen the junior in the second year become a super super strong designer but that's also happen in the industry because what you happen in the industry if your boss the leader is not that strong how is a junior designer really try to take over the call, the, the, the project and then to make the project successful? Mm. So in a way you can see the platform, the, the way of how to run a platform is really like from the real world and then from the real life. Everything mm. becomes a very dynamic type of way. Mm. And now the designer becomes much more uh, robust and then to face different type of situations. Mm. Actually this uh, vertical platform course format now, is it, is it common or how unique is uh, it? No. Basically, right, a uh, few people they try in a smaller scale. Mm-hmm. The bigger scale have been tried is in uh, this atelier, the ENSCI in NC in France. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. NC is a one purely five year platform, a uh, five year vertical. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, but the way they do vertical is slightly different from us. That means the student they come in the first year, they maybe, I forgot about 10 different platforms or something, different type of studio rather than to choose. Mm. And then but the supervisor will discuss with the student and then based on their interest, they suggest what to take. Rather than the student have a their own, the student have their own choice, but it's much more with the consultation of the, 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 the lecturer mm. in NC. Mm-hmm. So it's slightly different from us. Ours is purely free and then allow the student to choose what they want. Mm-hmm. But for them, it's much more the teachers still have some influence to the, the, the student. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Dr. Yen, mm-hmm. for that brief history. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Actually, yeah, maybe 40 minutes, maybe, maybe just like one last question, unless mm-hmm. somebody has a burning question and can submit it before we close. Okay, can ask. Yeah, okay. Maybe for Dr. Yen, mm-hmm. like what's one thing that you always want to impart to your students when you teach here in the ID? Mm. Like one common thing that you always like, want to impart to your students to learn. Okay, I think it's very hard to say 
like because I think the society change, mm. the things also change, and then the things focus is quite different. Mm. But in some certain sense, what I always believe is that for university, what we need to do is we design a platform, and then this platform allow the student can make use of platform to learn what they want to learn. Mm. So for example, when we do for our design for medicine, we what we try to do is really we create a platform. So we allow the student to assess for different doctor, assess for different uh, medical environment, assess for uh, lectures, uh, no, operation theater or whatever. So allow them to gain the information, allow them to identify something. As well as we try to provide, a, for example, the class uh, that in our, studi- uh, in our workshop, we have a very nice 3D printing or uh, other type of facility. Mm. So we try to allow the student to make use of that. So in one way, it's much more how can we identify or provide an appropriate platform for the student and then allow the student to make use their creativity mm-hmm. to come out something to do mm-hmm. by themselves and then to become even better than us. You know, I think that's the main thing for educators need to do. Because mm-hmm. I don't think you want to hang hold them, hang hold them and then to do what they uh, to reach something because in the end, you can see another student, they can perform even much better than us. Mm. I think from my maybe past 20 years here, you can see the super designer like Hans. Hans Dan is graduated from here. And then it was one of my students before. Uh, Tom Cole also graduated from here. And then so it's also super, super strong. And mm. then you also can see few others, uh, very famous designer. But if you want to talk about parties type of things, I may not be fam- uh, much more famous than them, but they can do much better than me. It's because we try to uh, provide an appropriate type of platform to allow them to grow. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, Dr. Yen. Mm-hmm. Mm. Maybe for women, like, uh, what's, what do you think has, the, has been the most valuable lesson from your time in DID? To end off. <laughs> <laughs> most valuable lesson. Maybe it would be just that, for example, studying alone, for example, getting a degree in design actually might not exactly provide you with everything you need, right, mm. to go into the workforce. Uh. But I think in DID, uh, I think what DID has provided me was actually like a safe environment that at the same time exposed me to the actual like working scenario. Right? So mm. like, it's more like a guided but you get exposed to whatever, like for example, working with clients and stuff. Like. So all this experience actually, you learn to appreciate all this actually only when you go into the workforce. Like. You realize that actually, for example, you learn, whatever you learn will actually come into use. Like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like. So at the same time, like during term break and stuff, go and pursue, for example, like internships and stuff. Like. Mm-hmm. So all these pieces and pieces of experience, right, mm-hmm. will actually accumulate and actually Eventually, you'll find it useful in the future. Mm. So, I mean, in essence, it's going to work hard. Work hard. Mm. <laughs> yeah, actually, maybe on that note, like, uh, like, what's one advice that you would give like somebody just coming into ID? Mm. Like, how, what do you think is the best way to approach the education in the four years? Four years. Or Dr. Yen also? Open mind. <laughs> okay, Dr. Yen. I think it's much more open minded and then. I think in one way, is, I think for me as a student, you need to be like a sponge. Mm. And then after that, you are able to absorb a lot of different type of things. And then you are able to, after that, integrate mm. and come out something different from other people. Otherwise, university education, we don't want to create a more and then all the students come out the same. It doesn't make sense because when you go out, uh, people cannot distinguish and then you also cannot find the job you want because all the people expertise are the same. But we want to base on this sort of dynamic type of environment mm-hmm. as well as a, a, a different type of platform and allow the student to grow their own expertise. Mm-hmm. So in one way, I think you need to be quite open-minded because sometimes you may have your preconception type of idea think about, oh, mm-hmm. this is not what I want. But in mm-hmm. the end, it may not be. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's also we try to uh, do the platform presentation. Uh, now all the students can see other type of platform. Allow uh, them to understand different other type of design rather than we treat this as a one unit type of a uh, unit type of a uh, design practice. Mm-hmm. So in that way, the students are able to really have much more better type of exploration, 
and then to allow them to flow in different ways, and then after that, they can be shining in different other areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so open mindedness <laughs> and to absorb like a sponge. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Yen. Even? We learn to appreciate everyone. So, for example, mm -hmm. I mean, not in the general sense, I'm more of like, for example, like appreciate what others can teach you. I mean, basically, even now I'm still learning from, for example, the undergraduates. Uh, so, by working mm. with them, actually, I learned a lot of new things also. Uh. So, the moment when uh, it's like Dr. Yen say, it's like, become, if you become more open minded, actually, it allows you to, for example, learn more. Uh, mm. you know? And at the same time, maybe, like, as, I mean, as a student, maybe you can pace yourself. Uh. You don't have to be like, the top student or this like basically it's not saying that you don't need to work hard but it's more of like grades are not everything and also at the same time like don't be afraid to like reach out to others right because actually our community is actually very small like four classes add up maybe less than 160 around well, there then mm. yeah it's a very small community la, so everyone is actually very friendly la. so even the like, professors are so if you have any like trouble or anything something you don't understand something you need help with like don't feel afraid to reach out so by reaching out, actually, you get to learn more and actually save sort of problem instead of like just trying to face everything yourself. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, Raymond. Okay, think we can call it a day. Okay. Hey, thanks, guys, for all your questions. Um, if you're here, actually, there's only one person here left now. Mm. So just like, feel free to join in tomorrow's chat. I think it's the second last or yeah. third. Ki Hong. Ah, second last. So it's Song Ki Hong. Yeah. So just yeah, we'll keep you up to date. Okay. Thanks, guys. Hope this was helpful.